Hello, everyone, and welcome to our organizational behavior presentation on Friends of Sammamish Valley. Before I jump into our presentation, I'd love to introduce you to our team. My name is Emma, and today I'm joined by William, Julie, Shreyash, CJ, Daniel, and Jimin. Today's presentation is going to cover four major topic areas. First, we will begin with the, some background information on the organization and talk more about its goals and objectives. Next, we will talk about the interview and the impressions we took from it. Then we will get into the proposed topic, which has to do with challenges surrounding organizational culture, and then finally follow up with our analysis and conclusions. First, a little bit on the background. Friends of Sammamish Valley is a nonprofit organization based in Woodinville, Washington, which is about 30 minutes outside of the Seattle area. It was founded in 2018 by a group of concerned citizens, two of which are my parents, John and Serena Glover. Besides the founding team, Friends of Sammamish Valley is composed of citizens, businesses, and organizations whose goal is to protect the rural character of the Sammamish Valley. Currently, the organization's main objective is to fight an ordinance that was proposed by King County, which would lead to urban development that is in direct threat to the historically protected valley and its surrounding rural communities. As a grassroots organization, Friends of Sammamish Valley is fueled by a fluctuating group of volunteers and community supporters who work year-round to lobby, fundraise, and bring awareness to the importance of protecting rural agricultural land. Now I'm going to hand it off to Julie to talk about our interview. Thanks, Emma. Our interview with the founders of Friends of Sammamish Valley revealed an organization of people with a strong passion for and personal investment in protecting the rural enclave of Sammamish Valley from urbanization at the hands of Seattle businesses and developers. Volunteer organization and participation was characterized by John as diffuse. Unlike typical for-profit organizations, team members only check in for a couple of hours per week. Retention and recruitment of team members is challenging because traditional ex extrinsic rewards such as salaries, bonuses, and benefits are limited. They depend primarily on intrinsic rewards to attract and retain volunteers, including personal investment, feelings of engagement, and perceived organizational support. We were happy to hear both John and Serena reference efforts they make that are in line with OB theory. Serena's choice to communicate using first person plural, we statements, when referencing the organization's accomplishments and goals is in line with our understanding of perceived organizational support. This effort demonstrates that the organizers appreciate and value the contributions made by their, their volunteers. Additionally, Serena employs tactics of persuasion that we discussed in class. When speaking to an inv individual about their organization, she customizes and frames her message to the person with whom she is speaking. With parents of small children, she references the loss of community spaces, loss of sidewalks, and pedestrian safety. When she speaks with the farmers, she refers to concerns regarding land speculation, runoff, and groundwater pollution. These efforts demonstrate the founders' commitment to fostering job engagement and employee involvement and participation. Now I'll hand it off to Daniel for some memorable quotes that showcase the fringe of Sammamish Valley's values, philosophy, and culture. Thanks, Julie. The core point of having an organization with a sense of identity and personal investment is achieved by building a culture reflected in the quotes above. The story of needing other incentive structures leads to the way Friends of Sammamish Valley frames their mission as a David and Goliath struggle. A community fighting ethically and in unity reflects a strong commitment to OB theory principles, especially job engagement. This narrative is crystallized in the bottom two quotes. Quote, we don't have other points of leverage or engagement like monetary compensation, threat of a bad review, or advancement opportunities, end quote. Quote, it's a David and Goliath situation, a small, loosely built organization pushing back against a well-funded metropolitan county with near endless resources, nine council members with in-house policy teams and legal staff, end quote. Now I'll pass it on to William to talk about our impression of the organization. Thank you, Daniel. Because of the pandemic, we come up with our impression on this grassroots nonprofit organization via a Zoom interview with John and Serena. During our interview, we felt Friends of Sammamish Valley is very welcoming, community friendly, and organized. Regarding to its structure, the leaders described it as informal and non hierarchical, and the local volunteers made up the majority of the workforce. However, through the conversation, we learned that the volunteers' tasks are based on their availability, and the leaders oftentimes struggle to keep volunteers on the same page about current goals. 
we recall that the reason why this issue occurred may be because there isn't any screening process during recruitment to check if the values of the volunteers are aligned with the founders and to establish basic expectation. From this initial observation, we were concerned and curious to find out more factors that prevent the organization from keeping its culture consistent and cohesive. Next, Jimin is going to give us a debrief on the topic that we are examining. The screen is yours. Thanks, William. In Friends of Sammamish Valley, our team looked at the lack of organizational culture and how that resulted in issues of communication with volunteers, organizational hierarchy dysfunction, and marketability to new volunteers. The main issue that we noticed during the interview was that the volunteer organization lacked to promote its ideologies, mission, and purpose to existing and new volunteers, which developed into instability and lack of motivation within the volunteers. The main issue was branched to minor issues of inefficient email communication, lack of a command hierarchy, and low retention rates with poor engagement. Next, Shreyesh will speak about the conclusions and possible solutions for the organization. Thank you, Jimin. Uh, here are some possible solutions to the problems mentioned by Jimin. In terms of communication with volunteers, FOS Week could start using flyers and newspaper ads as a supplement to emails while setting up a team app like Slack or Microsoft Teams to share information among the core members. Being more technologically advanced is not always a good thing, especially if your volunteer base is in the age range of 50 to 70 years old. In terms of organization hierarchy dysfunction, a clear established hierarchy of power is important. This allows volunteers to feel like they're part of an organized focus rather than a dysfunctional one. This structured network allows for an easy flow of information and assignment of responsibility to volunteers. And finally, in terms of marketability to new volunteers, we believe FOSV should attend college events, partnership with speaker events to raise awareness, put advertisements in newspapers to continue to target the older market segment, and also establish a summer intern program to increase volunteer retention rate. CJ will now cover how the organizational behavior theory relates to these solutions. Thanks, Shreyash. So we propose creating culture informed by OB theory. Firstly, culture addresses the issue of communication by building a sense of identity and citizenship among all members of the organization. Implementing organizational culture starts with using good communication methods to establish the organization's values and beliefs. From channels low in their capacity to convey information, such as flyering, to channels higher in richness, such as using a team app to communicate, all are essential to building a shared company culture. Secondly, we address the issue of organization hierarchy dysfunction by shaping attitudes and behaviors which establish organizational norms and expectations. Improving com communication allows organizations to establish structured hierarchical formal networks to hold volunteers more accountable for their results and behavior. In addition to motivating volunteers through recognition and experience, the added structure creates more motivating work for volunteers through the core dimensions of the job characteristics model. Lastly, organizational culture addresses the issue of marketability, since culture distinguishes one organization from other organizations. By marketing the culture, the organization attracts volunteers to a shared identity and shared values on top of the larger mission. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Now we'll move on to Q&A to answer any questions you may have. 